Continuing on with preliminaries of R, I want to talk a little bit to you about function calls. So at the end of the last slides, I mentioned that um, everything that you can do in R is a function call, and then everything that you have in R is an object. So we're going to start first with these function calls, and then in a later slide of slides, we'll talk about objects in R. So in general, a function call in R will take this structure. You'll have the function name to start with. And then in parentheses, you'll have what are called the arguments. So for each of those, you can have a formal argument that gives the name of the, the option you can set, and then you'll put in a named argument for your choice for that. So this together forms a complete R expression. And then once it runs, the output will, will be shown in R, your R console. So here's an example of that. Um, this is a call to just print out the phrase, hello world. So if we break that apart, the function name there is print, and then we've got the parentheses that contain the arguments. The formal argument that you can set in this case that we're using is x equals, and then we're setting that to be equal to hello world. So that's the actual argument that we put in. That's our choice for that um, formal value of x in this call of the function. And so we can look in R. And we type that in again, again, press return once you have, and you can see that it evaluates and prints out what we wanted. So these arguments are how you customize calls to an R function. There are a lot of R functions out there, and um, they'll often have default behavior, but you might want to change that, and that means they can do a lot more for you. And th these arguments are how you set and make those changes each time you run the function. So for example, if we wanted to change and not print out hello world, we could change the, the um, value that we're giving for the argument and change it to high Fort Collins instead. And then when we run it, it will replace and it will use that for the argument. There are a few functions that don't have any arguments. One example is the get R version function. All this does is tell you which version of R your current R session is running. So for that one, you don't have to put anything in those parentheses. You still do have to have the parentheses, but you don't have to put anything within them. There are also um, cases where functions, and this is actually more, more common than not, where functions will have multiple arguments that you can fill out. So the general structure for doing this when you have multiple arguments is to put each set of the formal argument and the named argument and separate those by commas. So here we're adding to hello world this option for quote. And if we leave that to true, which is the default, and I'll talk in a minute about defaults, then you can see it prints it out with quotation marks around it. But if we want to change that behavior, then we can set quote equals false, and now it'll be printed out without quotation marks. So I just mentioned some option, optional um, arguments there. So I think it's important to understand this distinction between arguments that are required for a function and those that are optional. If an argument is required and you try to run the function without setting it, then you'll get back an error for that. You have to make a choice for something for that. So one example is that argument x for the print function. If we try to run print without setting x, then you'll see that we get an error, that there's no default for that particular argument. We have to put something in for that. For optional arguments, though, R already has a value it will use if you don't set something else. So for those, if you're fine with the default, you can run without specifying the, those arguments in the function. So the quote that we looked at was an example there. The default for quote is true. So you can see that we get exactly the same output whether we set quote equals true or whether we leave it off when we run that function call because R um, takes that function and just um, goes to the default value. So you can find out about these things like which, which arguments you can set, which are optional, which are required, um, what types of values you get back and what types of inputs you can put into the function by looking at the help file for the function. And to get that again, all you have to do is question mark and then the name of the function. So for example, if we wanted to take a look at the help function for mean, excuse me, the help file for the mean function, we can put question mark and then mean. And you can see over here a help file has opened. And this is something that you can scroll through to get more information. 
I've put in a, an overview cartoon here of some of the common things that you'll see in these help files. One area is the usage, and I'll talk about that in just a second in more detail. But it's also got a sec section with the arguments where it says every argument that you can set for that function and what kinds of values the, the um, argument that you put in can have. It'll also have a section for value where it tells you what you'll get back when you run the function. And then often they'll also have these examples, which are kind of um, uh, executable uh, examples that you can bring in to the console and try out to get a feel for how that function's working. So this usage section is the space where you can figure out which arguments are required and which arguments are optional. It will have the function and then the parentheses, and then it'll put through all of the named arguments that you can have. If a named argument does not have equals and a value after it, it means that it is a required argument. It's something that you have to set. On the other hand, if you have a formal argument and then you have the, um, a value after it, those are optional. Those are values um, where it will default to that default value, whatever is in the usage. And if you want to change that, you should set it. But if you're fine with that value, you can just leave it as is. So I just wanted to know one small exception to some of these rules. So I mentioned that for um, functions, we'll have the function name and then the parentheses, but there is one special type of function where that isn't the case. These are called um, infix operator functions, and there are only a few of them, but they tend to be things where it doesn't feel natural to have it as a name with parentheses and then the values inside. Instead, these are the things that feel more natural to put in between two arguments. So one example is the plus operator. This will add two numbers together. So the actual function here is that plus sign, and the arguments it's evaluating are two and three. But with this special structure, it lets you put it in between. So these exist for several mathematical functions. Some common examples you might want to use are plus, minus, um, the asterisk for multiplication, and then um, a forward slash for division. There are also some for logical operators and assignment operators, and we will cover those later, um, the assignment operators later in, in uh, this week, and then logical operators later in the class. And just as a, a fun fact about those, so even though these are functions that you put in the middle of your argument, if you really want to, you can evaluate them and use them as you would for classical functions with the parentheses by surrounding them in back ticks. So this will do the same thing as what we just looked at in terms of adding two and three. It's just a different way of expressing that. The one time when this can be particularly helpful is if you ever want to get a help file for an infix operator. This is the way you need to do it. You can't put the question mark and then the, the plus sign by itself or the minus sign or division sign. You have to surround it in back ticks. And then you can see over here that has opened up a help file for us for some of these um, uh, basic operators. <laughs> 